Hey guys, we're back again doing another what if section. This is the first one in 2013, isn't that different? <laughs> sure. What we were going to talk about now is uh, if Yu-Gi-Oh! used block format. Games like Pokemon and uh, Magic is... I think for Magic they use a time period. Um, they might use that in Pokemon too. Of sets that they use. I think for Magic it's a year. It's a year thing for um, Pokemon. I'm not exactly sure, but they, over a course period of time, they um, start to make it where old sets, the cards can't be using them anymore, so. So basically, like, every set is going to eventually be phased out, and like, you know, like you said, staples, usually some staples tend to get reprinted, but um, the sets themselves will eventually be phased out, and so that kind of, it makes the game interesting because it sort of substitutes as a ban list. Because if something's broken or whatever, broken, um, it will eventually be phased out and it just, you won't have to worry about it. And you can be assured that it will be. There won't really be like any, how should they hit this deck? It'll just be like, it's gonna. The, the, go. the whole thing is going to be basically phased out. It doesn't, it makes it where certain staples and things don't get, you know, out of hand with uh, certain prices as well as if they think a staple's too broken but they think it should still be used, they can reprint it with a new text to say something something different, but you know, along those same lines. Like as it stands, you know, there's that time before banless period where you don't really want to sell anything, really buy anything. Like you sort of do, you sort of don't, because prices are all up in the air. But in a block format, you'll know that everything is going to get phased out. Like you'll know exactly what day this card will get hit. And so you can know like how to buy and sell. Now maybe this would be a bad thing. I think it would keep <coughs> prices under control. Nothing would ever get to that out of hand point because of the impending fact that it's going to get, you know, banned or whatever. People have said either 12 or 24 months works. Both of them work very well. You know, usually going out of, um, usually going right after nationals. There's a period um, of nationals after nationals, Ju July and August where there's literally nothing happening. Um, there's no regionals, there's no events. You would have a transition period of phase out old sets. And um, I know what Magic does is whenever their transition period cuts off the past sets is they release one giant set that, you know, they reprint things and then they bring out what new card types would be coming out. I think that like a 12 month cycle would be really cool. I think a 24 month cycle would be interesting. I think it would get a little out of hand. I think 24 months is kind of a long time for some stuff to be on top. Now, um, the question I have that I haven't, you can tell we didn't research this. Um, the question that I have is like, if say, okay, Abyss Rising was released in November, like early November or something, right? Yeah. Okay, so does that mean that next November, or well, you know, November 2013, it would, it would immediately be like cut off? Or would it be like every, July, everything gets chopped off because that would mean that like technically Abyss Rising only got well maybe like eight months in the market, and so how would that work? I have no idea. The difference between Pokemon and Magic is Pokemon it doesn't have a, a specific time where everything is cut off. Oh, it's just each, yeah. Each set they release, um, they have a certain number of sets that are supposed to be in the format, and each set new set they release the um, the last the set farthest back is caught out. They implement small reprints every so often of certain cards just to, you know, keep them live, like double colorless. And so, like, they have it probably, let's just say it's it's the third set to the last now, well, in three sets, they're probably going to have to reprint it again if they want to keep it in the game. Yeah, I think, I love this idea. I think this is something Yu-Gi-Oh! could, like, it could be interesting if we tried something like this. I mean, I know it's not going to happen, but again, it, this is, it's a what if. So like, I mean, think about it just right now. That would mean that if the, if this current format or this block cut off in July, like a week after Nats or something like that, that would mean that you wouldn't really need to worry about Mermos getting hit or windups getting hit because you would know they would just go, just buy, yeah. they're gone. And if you know, you did it of transitions of, you know, each set, and if we only had, what do we have, like four sets a year? Yeah. So if we did like months. four or six sets in the uh, current format, then you know by now, I think that wind up, wind ups and executors they wouldn't be here, 
and like some rabbit yeah. wouldn't be here because the sets would be phased out. And it's interesting to think about, you know, for a deck like Dino Rabbit, Cobblezons and Saber Source are both old cards. So this would keep people using new stuff, which I think would be great marketing for Konami. I mean, we know that they like to market their new product. And so uh, cards like Saber Source, Cobblezons, you they just wouldn't be there. Eventually Tour Guy Tour Guy would already be gone by now. And like and they could still control the staple spells that everybody kind of debates about, like Reborn, Heavy, Trunade, Cold Wave, like they could reprint them as needed and phase them out and just make it kind of a strategic thing. You wouldn't really need a ban list to deal with a lot of this stuff. As the format changes, they could change that easily and they wouldn't have to have it, you know, at specific times. I mean, it sounds like something interesting. It sounds like something that could kind of change up how Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, is viewed, how... I don't think it would change, like, the meta itself, but it would change just so much about, like, events and... And plan and like planning and things like that. I think that I think it'd be like a more positive than negative change. There would have to be a lot of a lot of thinking and time going into it, and it would take a long time to actually, you know, get the Yu-Gi-Oh community to to be even okay transition with it. it into it. I don't know how well it would resonate, but that's why we're asking you. So leave comments. How do you think this would change the game? Do you think it would be a good change, bad change, average change? I don't know. Anyways, so um. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Give us suggestions for other things to talk about. And remember to like and subscribe. And uh, in the comments, tell us how often you want these to be posted. Bye, guys. messed up the subs the new YouTube subscribe button is down I it's don't down there. I don't notice I don't care about I YouTube. hate the new YouTube everyone it's a piece of shit Google change it just don't ban my account for saying that but change it it's terrible subscribe buttons down there somewhere like everything else I don't know I guess figure it out